All right, so we are going to be building a roll cage today. Now, I did some research on roll cages. We were going to go all the way over the head, down through the dash, and into the floor, but it's very dangerous, according to the internet. I think it's probably true because it makes sense uh, to have an over the head bar if you're not always driving with a helmet. And I won't be. I'll have this on the street some, have it on the track some. So, we're going to go with what I've found some factory cars do, namely the 911 GT2, and we'll build a half cage. So, the cage will we'll do like a main hoop here come back to our what would be our strut braces but because we don't have struts it, it'll just be our wheel wells um, and create harness bar and all the things we're going to need to keep us safe but we'll take out these overhead bars uh, just so that if we are in a wreck on the road without helmets I don't run the risk of hitting my head on a steel tube that would be bad so I'm taking some measurements we're going to do kind of our main hoop this is pretty simple in terms of like coming up with what you need um, I measured to where the body kind of bends in. Almost all cars will bend inward towards the roof, and that's 19 inches. We're going to go just a little bit above where the bend starts, and that'll help our tube kind of hug the wall a little bit better. So 19 inches to about right here, and then our total from the ground up is 33 inches, so we just subtract 19 from that to get the distance from here to the roof. And then the total width of our roof is 37. So that's kind of going to give me an idea of what this needs to look like. And uh, we're going to be losing some of our distances with our bends. We'll figure that out over on the bender. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we should be able to bend this thing up. This is the most expensive bend because it's so long. So we'll do it first, get it out of the way, and then we'll be able to make all our supports and stuff. I think it's going to be pretty easy. We've had a lot of practice with the Rogue Fab bender. So this should be a piece of cake. We'll see. Let's do it. So we have our floor, our roof and then kind of a straight up line. Everything we're dealing with here is triangles. This can be a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna to try to make it make sense. We've gotta hit 90 degrees from here to there in our bends. We're gonna take some of that out here. So whatever this bend ends up being, where we go at our 19 inch, we'll just subtract that from 90, and that'll give us the angle of this bend for our roof. So we'll do this one first, and the way I'm gonna get it is with my digital level. So I got this with the bender for tubing but we're gonna take it over to the car. We'll put it on the side of the car and get a reading, 89, and then we'll put it on the angled part of the roof and get a reading, and 73, 89 minus, whoops, minus 73 equals 16. So this first bend is only gonna be a 16 degree bend, and this one should be 74. So we should have a 16 and a 74 to get us to the roof. And that should hug the body really good. That's the whole goal in building a roll cage. You want it to hug the body as nice as possible, as tight as possible, um, because that's the safest thing to do. And it's the coolest thing to do. I think what I wanna do is bend a tube to 74 and bend a tube to 16 so we can see how much length they take up from our total. I think that makes the most sense. So let's do that first. We're using inch and a half 120 wall, um, which is, Roll cage tubing, this is not DOM, but we're not racing in any sort of any sort of series, so it's not necessary really to run DOM. All right, so these are our two bins that make up 90 degrees. We got 74 and 16. Uh, and what we're gonna do is use these to come up with our calculations for how much straight pipe we need. Now you can use math for this. You can use t uh, programs like Bintech for this. Um, I'm not the greatest at math and I don't have Bintech, so this is what I'm gonna use. This bin, this section that we just made, costs around $3.50, $4. Um, so it is a little bit wasteful, but what this is gonna do is give me a better idea of how much space my actual bins take up. I'll be able to lay it up in the car, make sure it's gonna work before we bend our you know, $25, $30 piece of tubing. So I'm gonna cut these up, lay them up in the car, and see how this thing's gonna look. Yeah, I've learned. Yeah, I don't know who drives a dump. Do we know someone that drives a dump truck? I don't think so. <laughs> Typically, when cars drive by and honk, it's people that we know. That was a giant dump truck. I don't know. Who, we don't know who it is. It looks like we measured that pretty much spot on. It's a little bit. It's a little bit sharper than this angle. Our 16 degree angle is just a little bit sharp. Then we've got this one. So you can see our bend. That should put us at the ground. Right there. 
pretty nice. Well, I guess that is three. So yeah, our bin runs about three and a half inches. So that's good to know, because I would not have subtracted that much. That means from our total width, we're gonna subtract seven inches to get our flat plane before our bins start. Maybe. This is a 10 foot long metal tube. We're gonna use most of it. This tube costs around $50, the whole thing. So this stuff is actually pretty expensive. More expensive than I was thinking. All right. Perfect. I purposely left it a little bit long. So our legs are gonna come all the way up here on this box. We're gonna have to use some steel. I've ordered some steel plate um, to put into here, but we're still waiting on it. But basically our legs are gonna come up here. So we've actually got some adjustment because we have this slope. And I wanna get it back as far as possible. You can see the bar doesn't fit in here right now. Um, and it's because we purposely left these legs long. So I think what we'll do is go ahead and cut an inch off of each end and just see what that does to our fitment. That looks so good, dude. <laughs> it lines up so well. We did go a little bit narrow with it, uh, but we can actually, when we're welding, we can throw a spreader bar in here. Yeah. Touching the roof up there, which is really cool. Just m millimeters of clearance. And I'm about that. I'm pretty excited about this, actually. I think this is gonna make building that firewall very easy. We wanted to make some rear supports for the roll bar and I wanted them to follow the body lines for a few reasons that I'll explain in the car. Um, I did figure out how to cal calculate the length of the bins. You remember the, uh, for you guys just a few seconds ago, but on the roll bar I made some practice bins to make sure that I wasn't going to overshoot anything. Um, what I did is I calculated the length of my bin and divided that in half and that gives you how much distance your bend is going to take out of your straight lengths. I don't know if that makes sense. If you've bent to before, it probably does. But the Rogue Fab Bender makes it really easy to figure all those numbers out. You put it on the bar, you bend the bar. And as you can see, we've got two that are identical. This is awesome. I feel like I'm actually getting good at this. Let me show you where these things go. I think you're going to think it's really cool. I think it's really cool. You know what we could do? Talk Should we? Technical. To you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we wanted to follow the body lines and I, I wanted to be able to use my little vent windows because I do feel like this car is going to be very hot uh, to drive in. So we'll open the vents up for that. But also, you guys remember in the last video, I talked about needing to build a firewall and we really need structure. Um, originally, I think I talked about making the firewall butt up to the window. I don't really like that idea. So what we're going to do is use the roll cage to help us build our firewall per uh, encouragement from an Instagram follower. So this is gonna go in right here. We're gonna mount it about 10 degrees down. 
and it will mount in just like that. We may take it out a little bit wider or in a little bit. The details will come in when we get our plates that are ordered, but basically that will be our roll cage. I actually really like that. That's probably how, exactly how it's gonna go. Whether we use plexi or, stain, or um, sheet metal or whatever, we'll have these supports going across and we can literally just build our firewall off so that this whole opening back here is just closed. Um, and that'll keep all the fumes and gases from getting into the cabin. It'll seal all this off and it'll keep us from having to solve the complicated problem of what do we do with the rear glass. So I think it's gonna look really, really awesome. I really like this a lot. Whenever you build a roll cage, you have to put it on plates. It basically makes the footprint of the bar a lot stronger, a lot wider. So if the car does roll over, it's pushing down on that six inch plate rather than pushing down on just the circumference of the tube, which is an inch and a half. We're not building this cage any sort of spec because there's no racing class is gonna go into. This is all for uh, experimentation and education. So. Um, I just got six inch by six inch, eighth inch thick plates made by Foothills Fab, which is a local fab shop owned by Taylor. Shout out to Taylor for getting those to me. Taylor does all kinds of fab work. He's got a CNC plasma and uh, he blew those out and they worked really awesome. So in the front, we just kind of formed them to the frame rails. In the back, we actually built these kind of boxes to sit our uh, rear supports on. Um, just because of the way it worked out, that was gonna be the easiest thing for us to do. And I really like the way it came out. I think they look good. My welding is getting better. I'm learning a lot there, but I think that's gonna work out pretty well. That works so good. Cool. That's awesome, very cool. So we'll come in, we've got a little bit of a gap here. We'll wanna close up on both sides, I think. But yeah, we'll come in and we'll just weld all the way around this tube and uh, then sit it back up in its spot, which is cool. Next week, we are going to weld the tops of these and start building our cross supports. We've got a few things we're gonna support, like these bars, we gotta do our harness bar and all of that stuff to make this thing completely done and we'll weld all of our tubing up, uh, make this cage a thing. Now, another thing we might do is door bars. These old cars aren't really known for safety, so we may throw some door bars in there just in case. And then this cage will be done. I think it's gonna look really, really awesome. Uh, if you need some fab, stuff done, maybe you need something built or you need some things like I did, like some plates cut out for your project, check out Foothills Fab. 
Uh, it's a buddy of ours, a friend of the channel. We autocross together, um, and he can get you basically anything you need. He's got a lot of uh, tools and skills to use those tools to build anything you need. So check out Taylor. He's a good friend of the channel. Give him a follow on Instagram and see the stuff he's building. He's building some really sick stuff. All right, I think that's all the time we got for today. I'll see you guys in the next one.